Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net and it is Saturday the 6th of June. Thanks again for watching. Now don't forget, we can send you an email when this forecast video is updated. Uh, all you need to do is send a blank email to us to the address that's on the screen here, generalweather-subscribe at weatherweb.net. That will add you onto the list and we'll send you notifications of when the videos are updated. Now, I thought today we'd do a complete review of the uh, atmosphere and take a look at the sea ice, solar, the El Nino, and just give ourselves a good overview as to where we are at the moment with atmospheric conditions. Um, kicking off, though, first of all, with the forecast for the next seven to ten days. This is the mean of the 500 millibar flow for the next seven to ten days. You're familiar with these charts. We've got the ECMWF on the left here. We've got the GFS on the right. And uh, what to notice from these today is a discrepancy between the two. This is the forecast valid from um, next Saturday through to Tuesday, the 16th of June. And notice the ECMWF look has this trough off towards the west of the UK with, high, with a ridge through the UK and higher than normal heights look here centred across Europe. But just notice on the GFS look, it has a trough through the UK, it has a ridge stuck out here in the Atlantic and it brings the UK into more of an unsettled northerly flow. So a marked discrepancy between these two models. Now what experience has shown is that when we get ourselves into a pattern such as we're about to go into or we're in actually at the moment where high pressure has been building, um, very often the models fall into dis disagreements when there's going to be a breakdown in conditions. Obviously at the moment the the uh, GFS is seeing that far more than the ECM WF as a breakdown and just a complete different pattern between the two. So I think what we've got to do is not rely too much on what the models are telling us but say that it looks as if there is going to be some sort of change. So I think what we're going to do at the moment is go with the idea of a breakdown of sorts coming through towards the back end of this week into the weekend. Um, this could really be the um, game changer for June because as you know we've been forecasting the second half of June to be more unsettled than the first um, and it'll be interesting to see how this one develops over the coming days. ECMWF isn't seeing it anywhere near as much as a change as the, uh, the GFS. Okay, so I thought what we'd do is just take a quick look at what's going on around the world just at the moment. And we'll kick off, first of all, with the Arctic sea ice extent. And uh, this shows the anomalies as well of the Arctic sea ice. And the normal line is the uh, orange line here. That's where the ice is normally. But you'll notice here, look, how it's retreating back from here, running down off the uh, eastern parts of Greenland. Also less up here and in here too. So we're seeing less Arctic sea ice around than normal just at the moment and this is the mean temperatures above 80 degrees north so this is for the north pole effectively and um, the green is the mean the blue is freezing point the red is what's going on at the moment and you notice here look how temperatures have crept up above normal now it looks as if these temperatures are going to be staying above normal they're probably going to peak somewhere up here we think we could get a mean temperature somewhere around the uh, 277 278 mark so perhaps up to um, several degrees above normal for the time of year perhaps trying to get itself up to around about the four or the five degree mark the amount of uh, Arctic sea ice looks like this. Um, blue is where we are at the moment. And you notice here, look, we're below the average. The average is the dark line running through the middle here. It's a 1981 to 2010 average. And uh, the gray here is two standard deviations away from the normal. So you see here, look, we're quite a way bit below uh, 2015 and significantly below where we were in 2012. And as far as previous years are concerned, 2015 is in here. Look, uh, this is going back to 2011. So we are on one of the lower years for sea ice extent in the Arctic. Overall, northern here, sea ice extent is looking like this. These are the anomalies going back to 1979. And uh, you notice here, look, we saw this rapid fall off. Uh, as we headed into the early 2000s. It's kind of stabilised somewhat since, um, but this year looks as if it's going to pull it down a little bit. At the moment, we're uh, 0.897 below normal. In the southern hemisphere, things looking like this. Uh, the anomaly again shown by the orange line, and you see actually much of it is outside of the anomaly in the Antarctic. 
and the Antarctic sea ice extent is almost up towards the peaks of 2014 at the moment so considerably more sea ice in the Antarctic so conflicting signs from the two below in the Arctic, above in the Antarctic. Um, but there is a theory that it takes quite a bit of time for any warming in the Arctic to show itself through into the Antarctic. So that could be what's going on there. Uh, Southern Hemispheric sea ice anomaly, that's been coming up as the north is reduced. Look, we're now up to 0.984 above uh, normal from 1970. And then on to uh, the sun. This is how the sun looks today. Quite a quiet sun overall. We've got a couple of sunspots. One here, one here. We've got one off to the east of the disk as well. Of course, we're in sunspot spot cycle 24 down here. Look, and you notice that we've, we look as if we've peaked through the cycle. It's come off really quite significantly during the last couple of weeks. We're seeing a little bit more activity now, but we're, we're still in this very, very quiet phase. And you notice there, look, on the average daily sunspot area charts, really, that just goes to show how quiet things are just now. In fact, this sunspot cycle will get close to this one here that took place in the 1880s. Cosmic rays looking like this. It's the bottom chart that we're interested in, in, in on here. Look, you notice how, look, cosmic rays have come off as the sun has got quiet. And this is the cosmic ray count for Greenland for the last few months. You see it varying look as we've gone through uh, the beginning part of the year. And picked up a little bit um, as we went through May. It's come off a touch this month, but it's still at uh, values that we haven't seen since November. OK, on to the oceans, and this is how things look just at the moment. Sea surface anomalies today showing uh, El Nino clearly in evidence here, look, running almost along the equator there, some really warm water. Uh, notice across the UK, look, we've got these uh, cooler waters still out towards the west, cooler waters here in the central part of the Atlantic interspersed with warm waters in between. This is a classic shape for a negative Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the negative AMO. Warmer water as well off the eastern coast of Australia there, look, and warm water too in the Indian Ocean. The Mediterranean also showing up as warm, warmer than normal at the moment. So the PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, looking like this. This is going back to 1900 to the present time. And you see here, look how we've come into negative territory with that. Um, have seen an increase uh, last year as we're going back into a more positive phase. And that's the more recent PDO look. You see how it flipped look here um, during 2012. And now it's just started to increase right the way through April 2015. was up here at a plus 1.5. The AMO, the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, looks like this. This is going back to 1856. And you notice here, look, how we've um, seen, a, seen a, us going into a more positive phase. But we now look as if it's drifting back now. Uh, we've seen quite a significant fall off. And uh, that's a classic signal of the negative uh, AMO. And then El Nino, well, warming waters that we've just seen. This is the chart going back to January 2011. You can see here, look, uh, there was La Nina. Here's El Nino coming in uh, June, July 2012. And it never really got going, did it? We, we thought it was going to, and it didn't. But now, look, here's the temperatures increasing. We're up to plus 1.29 from last week. So that's taken us into moderate territory. And the CFS ENSO forecast, this is the El Nino forecast from the CFS. Obviously, it's only one model, but you can see here, look, the predictions for the coming months are to uh, see that increase, that moderate. It still wants to get up here towards a 2.5. We think it's going to settle off, actually, at a 1.7 to around a 1.9. So somewhere around here, but the definite trend is upwards. And then we'll see quite a sharp fall off at the back end of the year into the early part of next year. So hopefully that's of interest and has been useful for you. I'm going to leave you with that for now. But don't forget, if you need a forecast for the next couple of days, you can check out Gary's Fast Forecast. And also you can subscribe to us and we'll send you an email through when the videos are updated. Just send an email to generalweather-subscribe at weatherweb.net. OK, I'll leave you with that for now. But whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching. Keep the sun shining and bye for now.